should have passed away. It depends. It's collecting data. You got to wait as long as you I want to know how long. Can I answer that very succinctly? Dating is a derivative from the word data, where you get information. When you date a person, they don't show you their character. They show you their personality. It took me 14 years to collect data. Oh, oh man. Was, okay. Oh, Lord. By his own definition. Lord, as long day. as it took. Do you know where fornicators go? Do you have something yeah. personal with Loretta? I think under the Thank surface, Thank he you. admires Loretta. That's not under the surface. I do. He admires, I admire, but I don't desire. But, but I have a beautiful now, wife myself. I've noticed this. There is no admire without some modicum of desire. <laughs> about uh, the preachers of LA, okay? These guys have influence, okay? They have an influence. So it's worth it for us to discuss. So now I'm going to play this clip, then I'll be stopping it along the way, okay? So this you have uh, Dietrich Hardon, Bishop Noel. Oh, fun fact, Bishop Noel Jones, he's a brother to Grace Jones, the actress, so if you can see, they actually do look alike. I'm like, oh, okay, who knew? All right, so let's uh, dive into it, and then we'll, we'll talk more about it. Okay, here we go. Sure, he is very busy, and, and we, we bless you, sir. Right. But I wanted to see you here. Um, the Brotherhood is here. Okay. Miss Kim, uh, good yes, to meet you. Now, uh, good to meet Looking you. Looking beautiful as ever. Really Thank you. I love, I love your look. I love that you, 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 you don't look like a traditional pastor. You come with your own style. Oh, no, I'm not traditional. No, you... I'm foundational, though. Okay, but do you consider yourself the bad boy of the gospel? No, I'm, I'm probably the nicest one out of all this group right here. What, just nice? Listen, you have many nice, you have many nice bad boys. Yes, sir. Okay. There you go. That's right. In fact, some of the baddest yeah. boys in the world are nice. You were arguing with him at the, at the dinner. That was McClendon. He was no, arguing no, with us. No, no, he was, the, he was arguing with me. He, at dinner, oh, when, you remember? When, when he and Dominique. Boom, yeah. yeah when they were uh, shacking. Uh, see, no. here we go. Right, okay. that part, that's what we were talking about when you got And I was trying to tell him back then. He said shacking is not the Bible. No, shacking is not the issue. You want to deal with the issue. The fornication is the issue, not the shacking. Because the shacking was really the old belief oh, the underplay. That's what you really wanted to know. And I would have told you, yes, I've had sex. You've had sex. We all had sex. At the time, I was struggling in that area. Okay. He's a young man. But, and I had a baby to show for it on the show. Yes, I and saw so, the child. You know, since then, I've, I've, I've married my beautiful wife. But now we've just celebrated 10 years. Fantastic. Wow. Let's talk about that. All the wonderful things that have taken place within the 10 years. That's right. The issue was really the sex issue. But see, when he mentioned that on the show, that thing followed me for the last 10 years. You shacking? So, Dietrich hadn't said shacking is okay. I never said shacking was okay. Okay. I'm that came from him. But, he but, brought that but, but now you're being contradictory. No, 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 no. That's what I thought. Dietrich Harden, right? He is testifying with his own mouth that during that time, he, wa he wasn't shacking up with, uh, with his girlfriend. Whether they were shacking or not, who cares? The issue is he was having a sex outside of marriage. Not only that, he admits that was his struggle. The scripture is clear, okay? If you, if you are burning with passions, it is better for you to marry than to be sinning. So this guy decided that it was okay for him to sin instead of to marry, so much so that the woman got pregnant. So even when they were getting married, the woman was already pregnant. So this was the second time where Dritik Harden was having, uh, uh, you know, this was his second marriage, right? But his first marriage, it was him who ruined everything. So instead of reconciling with his first wife, people don't believe in reconciling with their first wives anymore. They just want to switch, go to another woman, right? But the scripture actually says you need to go reconcile with your first wife, okay? Especially it was him who was in the wrong. No, they just go and find a new wife. And they excuse living promiscuously, committing this adultery, and they think that it's okay. Like, no, it's not okay. The scripture speaks against that, okay? Um, First Corinthians 6, right? Actually say free from sexual immorality. So, but these people are in the church, right? Gospel artists and a preacher and a PK for that matter. Then what message do we have for Jennifer Lopez? Hmm? Because you're making a point that you can shack and still not sin. How many of us, and, and, and he's been divorced, I have been divorced. Okay. I've been divorced. You've been divorced. And you've been divorced. I've never been married. Okay, cool. And my marriage I, is still in force. I never thought in my life that I could be in bed with a woman and never want to touch her. Because it was fire in your bosom. No. No. Nope. Uh -huh. Because you the relationship. You don't want to say that. You don't want to say that. The relationship. 
the relationship had deteriorated mm -hmm. to the point that even in the marriage, some of his wife, first wife, even yes. in the marriage, you didn't, didn't want to go to bed. Right. Well, Kim, that's a good question. Okay, and I have a good answer. And a good answer is a God answer. I'm not just talking about an answer. Bishop Noel Jones is an icon. I know he talks about the iconoclastic and all those big words that you shouldn't put a preacher on a pedestal and make him so iconoclastic. Remember that? But he's he's articulate like that. But when you are a preacher, a general in the faith, like Bishop Noel Jones is, then you have a lot of young men that are watching him. He's mentoring a lot of young men. So it came to my mind, since he has so many young men gravitating to him and want to be like him, be a mentor and not a tormentor. Mm -hmm. Tormenting them in the sense of making them think it's okay to date a queen like Loretta, mm -hmm. who he was dating. One of the most beautiful ladies outside of my wife mm -hmm. in the world today, okay? And it didn't look good, especially after he revealed that he was dating her for 14 years. The Bible says, not Ron Gibson, not Dietrich Haddon, not Wayne Cheney, not Bishop Noel Jones. The Bible says that don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's totally out of context, that one. That scripture doesn't apply to anything you just said. Okay, well, let's go to this end. How can a man, how, how can a man take fire in his bosom and not get burned? How can you have a beautiful lady like that? But they were friends. What my understanding, and, and, and I didn't and, know one of them. No, no, they were more than friends because, because Loretta said on the show, if you recall, yes. she wanted to marry Bishop Jones. After she said she didn't want to. Oh, but then she recanted and said, I do so she want to marry. And so when you're in a relationship like that, it just doesn't look good for young men that are aspiring to be ministers like, like Bishop Jones. Right, but, but why did it bother you so much? You were passionate about this because I'm gonna be honest with you. If this man ain't ready to marry me, I don't want him to marry me because we're gonna have more than fire in my bosom. <laughs> I'm gonna have fire on the stove. That's a good point, Kim. Yeah. See, yeah. One, of, one of the things that Ron is not accounted for in a okay. relationship with Loretta is that Loretta is a very independent, very strong uh, woman. Okay. I didn't want okay. a quiet, uh, passive right. woman who I could control. Who? Yeah, well, well, uh, I, on, wanted a woman, I wanted a woman who was equal. Never came up as what the point he made, and we didn't know that then. Uh, right. The world knew it, that he had proposed before. That's true. That's we didn't true. know that. You're exactly right. And her hello, hello. Okay, so as you can see, this is Pastor Noel Jones, okay? So all these, uh, these are no pastors, okay? They are preachers. He said that he went out with a girlfriend, I mean, like for 14 years, okay? First of all, as a pastor, what are you doing having a girlfriend for 14 years? And to me, I'm like, okay, you as a woman, for 14 years as a girlfriend? I mean, at that point, it's just like, no, forget about it. But anyway, Loretta waited, okay? After that, and they ended up, they got married. But Noah Jones was married before, okay? And then when uh, Ron, Ron is the one, only one who has never been uh, divorced. He's still married to his wife. He's saying that, oh, can a man carry fire to the bosom and not get burned, right? So he's concerned, like, okay, the scripture that you're using is not in context, but... Even if somebody doesn't, whether the scripture is out of context or not, like, does it make sense for somebody to be a, a single pastor and dating a woman for 14 years? I mean, what is that? But these guys, they do not hold the scriptures seriously, but they want to accommodate everything else they want. And then he went on to say, like, oh, he didn't want to marry a woman who is passive. Why would you want to marry a woman who is passive? Okay. Yeah, you are a man. You're supposed to lead. Right? Like, and he said you wanted to marry a woman who is strong and independent. Like, why? You see what I'm saying? So, you are actually, you know, you want to marry, like, why do you want that? To me, it just didn't make any sense, right? Him being a pastor, be like, okay, I want to marry a godly woman. I want to marry a prophet, said one woman, right? Like, okay, so if for 14 years, at what point did you find out that Loretta was this independent, strong woman and everything else? So I don't get it. To me, I think he just realized, you know what? I'm getting old. I need somebody to take care of me in my old age. Let me marry this person. Because, like, I mean, 14 years? And, I mean, what type of courtship is that? What type of courtship is that? So mm, very s suspicious with his, uh, uh, with how uh, he's, he's looking at the scriptures here. Okay? <laughs> so are you telling me that for 14 years, Bishop Noel and Loretta were just uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm? But we continue to hear what they are saying. So you were tormenting Loretta? Now, did Bishop no, no, not at all. Loretta, no, Sister Loretta. Not at all. Right. Bishop, was his constant reminder that you have not gotten married, when you're going to get married, uh, did that get on your nerves? It didn't bother me one, one really? bit. Really? Oh, no, and I'm telling you why. Because 
When you have a certain amount of security about who you are, and then when you understand the person who everybody's talking about in relationship to you getting married to her, mm -hmm. when you understand those dynamics, then you're not moved by it. I'm only moved by a sincere word from her, but she can't propose to me. I have to propose to her. Right. Good man. And, and that's the whole point. And she can't rush the process. Or she Russians, can't, 14 or, years. Or she can't slow the process. Are you talking about a nationality or reality? You, you, you Russian see, or rushing? See, as a single pastor, mm -hmm. for someone who waited 14 years and yes, someone sir. who, again, said he should have done it the moment that she signified the intention. I didn't say that. How, how long should a pastor wait? It depends. It's collecting data. And you got to wait as long. <laughs> as you I want to know how long. Can I answer long, that? Very I succinctly. Sure. Dating is a derivative from the word data, okay. where you get information. When you date a person, they don't show you their character. They show you their personality. It took me 14 years to collect data. Ooh, ooh. Oh, That's man. Okay. Oh, Lord. By his own definition. That's Lord, as long day. as it took. Do you know where fornicators go? Do you have something personal with Loretta? I think under the Thank surface, Thank he admires me. Loretta. That's not under the surface. I do. He I admire, but I don't desire. But, but I'm a beautiful wife myself. They've noticed this. There is no admire without some modicum of desire. There is no admire. Yes, sir. Without a modicum okay. of desire. Okay. What is modicum? Let me bring this. Can you huh? jump in, please? <laughs> <laughs> right, I got to You figure it out. Pastor, I just jump in. What they put in this? I need to hear your thoughts. Ron you need to about. know mm -hmm. desire. Mr. Mr. Ron Gibson needs to know that marriage is not the solution to everybody's lust problem. I never said that is. What but you're saying? Well, you're you're the saying that marriage. Your preacher is better to marry than to burn. Yeah, but that's that we've used that to get these young people and, and in marriages and, and, and when they get in it, it's times. a mess. That's true. That's, better better that's to, why the divorce rate is at all time high within the church because of that kind of teaching. It's better to come. I'm a victim of that. When, when Bishop got married, they were wailing and crying. I'm sorry. They were. They were. OK, so notice, OK, we have um, Bishop Noah Jones. For 14 years, he was collecting data. I mean, we know that's a lie. OK, it should not take you 14 years to find out if that's a woman you want to be with for the rest of your life. OK, he, that, that, that's just a lie. And he went on to say, but, you know, accuse whatever wrong. Like, no, you can, you know, you can admire somebody without having anything else. Unless if he has evidence to the contrary. But I doubt because I don't think, you know, Ron is type of like he's like old school type of guy. But, you know, who knows whatever the dynamics they have. Right. But I don't believe that. Is, I don't believe that to be true, in my opinion. Derek Hardo now. He's in, he is there contradicting with the scriptures, okay? He's blaming the scripture. <laughs> he is blaming the scripture that uh, these are the principles that we've taught young men, that it is better for them to marry, and as a result, we are having a high rate of divorce. No, 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 no. The Bible says as much, okay? If you know that you can control your passions, by all means, control your passions. But if you cannot control your passions, it is better for you to marry. That's what the scripture teaches. So if young men are out there, they cannot control their passions and they desire to marry, it is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And then you cannot excuse that you divorce somebody because you, like, what is that? Like, no, that's, that's not an excuse at all, okay? So... People need to learn the dangers of divorce, okay? People need, people need to learn, like, you know, how to be a young man, how to pursue a woman, how to be a godly man, how to be a godly woman, okay? People need to learn just to be, not, you know, not to be sick in those relationships at that age. Like, you know, look for the, like, okay, this is what you desire, but, you know, these, you can partake this when you guys get married. But because we've made sex so cheap, so nothing, that it has lost its meaning, it's no longer sacred anymore, then you have people like Dietrich Harden say like, oh, you know, I was in the church, I was forced to marry, that's why I ended up getting a divorce. No, but you got a divorce, you're busy messing around. You just didn't get a divorce for whatever, you know what I mean, for whatever the reason. So it's unfortunate that... He doesn't even believe in the scriptures. So what exactly is Dedrick Harden going to tell you? What counsel is Dedrick Harden going to give you? Huh? Because he thinks that it's okay. People can divorce for whatever the reason. Right? For whatever the reason. <laughs> no, man. It should not be so. Oh, man. Okay, guys. We continue. Some women were wailing and crying. And I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now, I didn't know 
that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Yeah. I, I might not flat. say what I heard. Yeah, open their legs. Uh, not have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. I lose my career. I lose my life. Okay. I don't know why um, Noel was crying. It, to me, those are like fake tears. He's more concerned losing, he, he, he's going to lose his career, he's going to lose his life. Like, no, you are, you are a preacher. Okay, this is not personal business. Come on, man. <laughs> so I don't know why he's crying over there. Okay, I didn't want him to play the music. You know how they do it over here. So I need to uh, let the music play a little bit and then I'll bring it uh, right back. Okay. All right, so uh, let's continue. Crying. I'm sorry, they were. There were some women who were wailing and crying. And I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now, I didn't know that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Yeah. I, I might it's not flat. say what I heard. Yeah, open their legs. Wow. I'd have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. While he's preaching. <laughs> yeah. In the front row. And now I, I, I didn't understand the security and all this, but I saw it what you all go through with my own eyes, that the devil is busy mm. and they're going to come at you at all angles. So you have to be a strong man, or a strong preacher, because it was it's difficult for your congregation to understand what's going on unless they're in your circle. So a lot is going on that you all probably don't even know. So when I say what he went through or whatever he's gone through and all the women and all that, for all of you. Data goes both ways, right? It's not only a potential mate, but it's introspective data to, to calculate you know, how much damage there was from the previous situation, you know, financial implications, right? right? Um, trust breached. You know, these are all things that have to be navigated. Sometimes again, there are great candidates there, but the reality is, you know, there's got to be some introspection. I don't know that we can put a timeline on that. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So did you hear what he said? Like, they're just talking about material things. They're going to be a financial, uh, you got to look for a candidate. Okay, there gotta be some intro perspective. We're talking about a, we're talking about a wife over here. Okay, why are you so uh, clinging to material things about the financial? Hmm? Why why is that factoring in him being a man? Right, you're looking for a wife. You already know that's your domain. You're supposed to protect. You're supposed to provide. You are just looking over here to find a good godly woman. But no, they'll be like, oh no, there has to be uh, candidates. And like, you're looking for a candidate for your wife? Like what? Is it a contest? Is it a competition? What's going on over here? Huh? What's going on over here? Like, no, 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 no. These guys, man, you got to watch out. Too worldly. Too worldly standards. Too worldly standards. Okay, let's continue. Personal. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're not going to make it personal. Well, but I mean, obviously you've gone through some yeah, things sure. and you can share with us. Sure. Yeah. Uh, are you collecting data uh, and the things that you've gone through? As it, you're divorced now, do you feel like maybe your spirit or, or is damaged somewhat and you need time to repair it? Well, the beauty is it's, it's been almost a couple of years, it's been almost a couple of years. Uh, you know, it, it feels fresh to many people, but there's been significant time. So I feel, feel healthy um, with regard to that. But there's no experience we have that doesn't change our lens, the lens we see the world with. And so my prescription is definitely updated. Um, and um, there, there are certain things you, you didn't see at 20 uh, that you see at 44. And um, it makes you process a little bit more. You evaluate things from a financial standpoint. Processing uh, finances. You, yeah, you, you evaluate um, uh, your small idiosyncrasies yep. that you don't have the time on this end to discover 15 years from now. Right. So I, I believe process is significant. And uh, I was actually looking to glean some wisdom uh, from the two of the, the, these two gentlemen um, as relates to that. Uh, but what I do know is this time around, I'm not selecting anyone for the church. One or for the broader community. That's definite. It, it has to be for me. So it has to be for me. Yes. are you dating? Are you single? What's what's going on? Are there women sitting in the front row that need a thing put over their legs? What's, what's going on? We haven't had to throw any lap scarves. <laughs> so the women are being. Uh, but, you know, after processing for a while and, um, you know, I think processing well, I'm definitely uh, open to uh, new experiences. Yeah. Are you open for reconciliation? Oh. No. What is reconciliation? Like if you had a gentleman like Bishop Jones, Dietrich, myself to counsel you as a support system to perhaps for, reconcile? For my, for my, uh, to reconcile with your first wife. No. Okay, you've been divorced. Do you okay. So you can see that these, these preachers 
However, their operating, processing these things is unbiblical to a T. Okay? He just told us, right, that he, right now, whenever he's selecting, guys, these people are selecting, okay? They are looking, they are on a runway. They're going to select the, the top contender. Is that how you choose a woman, a godly woman, a wife? And this is coming from the pastor's mouth. So this time around, according to his own testimony, oh, I'll not be definitely whatever I'll be selecting, whatever I'll be choosing, I'll not be choosing somebody for the church. I'll be choosing somebody for me. Well, you should have known from the beginning as a pastor that your wife is your wife, is not the wife of the church. So according to your own testimony, which means you were choosing a wife for the church, not for yourself. No wonder, I'm sure maybe this is why she left. Be that as it may, you thought this guy has learned his lesson. No, he hasn't. He's back again. The finances again. He's learned some, some things, but this time around, he'll be careful of how he's going to be choosing. Instead of like, right now, I'm looking for a Titus 2 woman. I'm looking for, for a Proverbs 31 woman. I'm looking for a godly woman. I'm looking for a woman who is going to be my helper. All these qualities that are listed in the scripture of what a woman, what a wife should be, those should be coming out of the mouth from the pastor. And then alone, that woman is going to be married to a pastor, right? So... There are things that are come come in with a uh, with somebody as an elder, right? Okay, is that woman of yours going to cause you to be disqualified? Because your household has to be in order as an elder. If it is not, you're disqualified. So, are you thinking in those categories? Are you thinking in those lines? Like, okay, I want to make sure I need to find a wife who is not going to, you know, if if anything, he shouldn't be a pastor to begin with. Okay, he should step down. Okay, he should step down. Okay, so because if your wife left you, hey man, to me it tells me. <laughs> something is not right up in there, okay? So this is the problem. These are the pastors that they're being promoted. They're doing whatever else uh, they're doing, right? And then he emphatically said that, you know, the, Ron says, that, okay, can we help you so you can reconcile to your wife, right? The wife is still alive. And you know what he said? He ab absolutely says no. So that tells me as a pastor, is he even praying towards that like lord i'm a pastor i don't want to be divorced can you please change me change my wife and everything so we can come back together because no he shut that door down so now he's looking for another uh, to to have another woman and everything right but from what the woman explained it looks like she was the one who who left him okay and it looks like you know he's hurt and everything but this is it's unfortunate that this is this this is how they um they are seeing things, right? It's all about them and their experiences and their money. So before we play this, okay, I want you guys to listen to his ex-wife, okay? So because the ex-wife is out here, she has her own channel, and she, I guess she, you know, she, hey, uh, you guys just take a look. The end of a relationship for me after 22 years and the implications of that on so many levels. So it was still hard for me to go into marriage therapy thinking that it would be over. I thought we can just figure it out. But what started to stand up was my non-negotiables. And there were things that I must have in this life and I could not live with myself without having them. Certain kind of freedom of expression, of joy, just I wanted going in. And at this point, I don't know if it was too late. Um, it gets very messy. Two people with feelings, emotions, two people with a life. It is the hardest thing to do is sort through the end of a relationship for me after 22 years and the implications of that on so many levels. So it was still hard for me to go into marriage therapy thinking that it would be over. I thought we can just figure it out. But what started to stand up was my non-negotiables. And there were things that I must have in this life and I could not live with myself without having them. Certain kind of freedom of expression, of joy, just I wanted to be in my life and I wanted to own my life and I wanted to run my life and I wanted to be a person, not in service for everybody else. Because remember, I had been doing everything for everyone and then that failed. So it was like, that doesn't work. We need to create something new because how I've been living, being perfect on the outside, it wasn't working. I had a daughter who was in crisis. I had a a father who was hurt, I, it was just it was just too much. We get to a point that we both saw that this was not going to work. 
the marriage that we have known for all of these years was likely going to be over. And if you've ever been through a divorce, you know. So that is Maisha. She has her own channel. And that's her sharing what led up to the situation as to why they got divorced. So as you can hear what she's saying, right? Like she had some things that were non-negotiables, okay? So what are those? Okay, you are, you are a Christian, you're a woman. You're married, to a, you are, you are married to an elder, you're married to a pastor, okay? So, you know, who knows what happened in their marriage. But according to her, she wanted to, you know, be able to do, be a person, do whatever else she wanted to do. So I guess she decided in order for me to be able to do those things is for me to get up out of here. So that's what happened. So she shares quite a lot on her channel, so... You guys uh, can take a look at that. But it's very unfortunate, okay? So the first lady is out. So you can see that guy, you know? Now, the next time, he wants to make sure. <laughs> the selection is going to be different this time around. How different? Who knows? But we continue. you have any advice for Pastor Chay? I think he defined that the wife finds the good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. It's a man's decision to get into a marriage. And it's that same man's decision to exit the marriage. And God gives him that authority to make that decision based on what he's experiencing in the marriage. And you can't control individuals in the marriage. You can't, you can't control a human being, how they think, how they feel, what they decide to do. If a woman decides to make a move, what can you... Before he even continues, that's a lie, okay? The, where do you get that in scripture? That God gives authority for a man to exit the marriage when he wants to. God gives him that authority to exit the marriage based upon his experiences. He can exit the marriage. No, 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 no. At the very least, what you have is like, okay, he's going to decide. Okay, he's the man. He's going to decide to pursue. Okay, pursue. They'll get married. Fine. He can decide that. But exiting a marriage, he has authority to exit the marriage on what basis, on what grounds? Do we believe that there's parameters? Okay. Oh, how a man, you, you should stay in your marriage, okay? Like, where are we getting this issue that the marriage has got a, a the, the door is just wide open, that you can just exit at your own will as you, as, as you please, okay? This is, Jesus dealt with this, okay? That school, okay, he, the Hara and the Shema, right? They will be like, okay, they're just going to divorce their wife for whatever the reason, so long as you give them the certificate of divorce. Jesus was like, no, 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 no. It was not so from the beginning, okay? It's not about you giving the woman the certificate of divorce. So according to Drew Harden, if your experiences in your marriage are not up to your standards as a man, you have a right to exit like, no, no, no. You're not going to find that in the scriptures, okay? You have responsibility to your marriage as a man. The wife has responsibilities to her marriage as well. So both of you, you should be fulfilling those things according to the word of God. Read Ephesians 5, please. Instead of out here lying, saying you can just exit as you please. That is not true. That is a lie. Derek Haddon is lying. He's lying on the scriptures here. He's lying on the scriptures, okay? So maybe we just need to read the scriptures right now. How about that? Let's take a look at the scriptures because this is not good, okay? And, man, at least pretend like you know something, okay? At least pretend you know something, okay? First Corinthians um, 7, 8, okay? Oh. So... To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to, be, to burn with passions. Okay? To the married, I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The wife, should se the wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And the husband should not divorce his wife. Okay? To the rest, I say, I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. Okay? So, people run away from this text, right? When, when it says, um, not I, but the Lord, right? And then when, when Paul is saying, I, not the Lord, right? So, people think that, oh, this is just Paul. This is not uh, the word of God. No, it is all the word of God. But what Paul is demonstrating over here. When in verse, in verse 10, when Paul is saying, not I, but the Lord, he is quoting Jesus. 
So Paul is saying this right now. I'm quoting Jesus. This is what Jesus says. Okay. To the married, I give this charge. The wife should not separate from her husband, but if she does, she should remain um, unmarried or else reconcile to her husband. This applies to the man as well. Okay. Don't marry, but reconcile. All those guys, they're divorced. Their wives are still, their first wives are still alive and well. So biblically speaking, they should reconcile to their wives. If not, they should remain single. That's what the text teaches. That's what the text teaches. So when Paul is saying, I know the Lord. So now he's telling you, I'm not quoting the Lord Jesus here. I'm just, you know, continuing with the flow. So people try to, you know, hide behind that text. Like, no, no, no. The scriptures are clear on that. But let's uh, hear more to the lies from Dietrich Harden. Okay, we continue. You do about that. So we got to be careful about this blanket uh, communication that makes people feel that have had to get out of marriages for millions of different reasons. They've had to get out of it. For instance. For, for their own sanity. For instance, what reason? I had to get out of my marriage for no, my own sanity. No, as it germane to him. No, what, what, what I like to say, I think It was important. his decision to, get, to he, defi- he found her. He made a decision to get into it for whatever reason without getting into his personal business. Right. He had to make an executive t- decision between the two to part ways. Right. And, and, and all three of us here have had to do that. All you've, all been, you've been the only one. Okay. That's been uh, so uh, yeah. blessed in that area. Is, but it doesn't make you better than any of us. I didn't say that, did I? I just want to make it clear. Or anybody that had to make that decision. If I listen to religious thinking, mm-hmm. it'll have me locked into something and be miserable. Never have my family. Never would have seen the other side of my life. So I really don't, you know, I don't pay attention to a lot of that. That I just, I, I hear it going one end or the other. I'm living my truth. Wayne is living his truth. Uh, uh, Bishop has lived this truth it's 14 years and now he's married, happily married. What am I living? Uh, you're living your truth. Oh, you've been married to you're happy? You, that's you, that's you. That doesn't do it happy. But that's Life you. Life is not a, a flower you, bed of ease. You're going to have some mountains and some valleys in marriage. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, we do know that. Two different Absolutely. people. Are you happy? Are you together. not happy now? That takes are you up, happy? Am I happy? Yes, are you sometimes happy? Sometimes I am. Sometimes, I'm, sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> you figure that part out. There's a difference between being above the radar and under the radar. We deal with so many people in our churches who have divorces, whose marriages break down, but they are under the radar. His position in relationship to me was so many people are iconoclastic in their view of an individual like me, which means then. Okay, so that's also the problem. Did you hear what Dudek Hadden said? He had to leave his marriage because of his own sanity. Okay, that's not a reason why to leave your marriage. Okay, <laughs> you have no reason to leave your marriage because, like, okay, you for for your sanity, like, no, wake things out, wake things out. Okay, that's not a reason to leave to leave your marriage. Okay, the scripture only gives okay in case of you know abandonment, you know somebody adultery, things of that nature. But this is Dietrich Hardon. He's going to make his own thing, and then he went on to say, "Oh, it's your truth and your truth." That's new age language. Okay, it's not about your truth or my truth. It is what is God's truth. Okay, what does God's word say? That's it. You cannot, it, truth is objective. So once you start making it subjective, it's about your truth, it's about my truth, it's about someone else's truth, then you, that, that's no longer truth. By definition, it cannot be. Because by that, you've just made it to be subjective, which it can't. By definition, truth has to be objective. But Dredd Haddon, clearly, he does not believe in that. That's why he's out here telling us all oh, these lies upon lies upon lies. And I'm like, okay, so Ron didn't say anything, okay, instead of them be like, you know what, you know, uh, God bless you, Ron, you stayed married to your wife for this long, you know what I mean? I wish I could do, I wish I had done the same thing, like, no, he doesn't seem to be remorseful for his first divorce, to be honest. If anything, it seems like, okay, you know, I'm glad (laughs) I'm divorced, eh? now I'm with somebody else, but, so... And then Bishop Noel is out here saying like, oh, we, we deal with so many people in our church who are divorced and everything. How many of those people who are in his church who are divorced did divorce according to biblical standards? That is my question. I will very much doubt that you, I'm sure you can count how many of them can fall uh, under that category. Let's uh, hear some more to uh, Lolera's husband. <laughs> oh, Lolera's husband. I-, I can't wait for Jamal's wedding. <laughs> oh, boy. We continue. I have to have a standard, and I have to exemplify behavior that is equivalent to how they view me or how they want to follow me. Now, what everybody should understand is we get that. 
we know that. So the question that people like Ron should ask is, what in the world was going on in the house of an individual who knows how he's going to be viewed, who knows the pain that he's going to have to deal with, who knows how he's going to be judged by the majority of the people who's looking at him. What in the hell is going on in his house that in spite of all that he has to face, he decides with his children, with his grandchildren, with grandparents, with the congregation, with the other pastors, he, if he moves to divorce, mm -hmm. they need to say something horrific has to be happening in that household My God. for him to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Then and secondly, come on. secondly, the issue of how long it took me to marry. How long it took me to marry was contingent also upon the fact that I had to reconcile in my mind that it was all right to marry again while my former wife was still living. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when you put all of the wow. pressures That's deep. that we have to deal with when we move into a situation where we're saying this ain't gonna work and I lose my career, I lose my life, I lose whatever I have gained, but I can't stay here. And nobody seems to understand that we have calculated down to the last minute mm -hmm. We've all taken that in. I've taken that in. The things, and people at home watching, I'm sure have taken that in. Because like I said, we have not taken that in and we will not and we don't. That ma that's manipulation on its highest level, okay? What is Pastor Noel saying? Okay, according to him, he knew that he cannot marry anybody else while his wife was still alive. That's why he didn't want to get married. So he, some truth to that issue, okay, because that's what the text says. And then he said himself that he had to reconcile it within himself. No, 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 no. <laughs> we reconcile with this. Okay, we reconcile with the text, we reconcile with the scriptures, not with your mind. So that's what Noel was doing. He was trying to reconcile everything that happened uh, with himself instead of reconciling with the scriptures. Not only that, he says, like, you know, people, they, we have to take account what, uh, uh, what other people are thinking. Who cares what other people are thinking? If what you're doing is in keeping with the scripture, then it does not matter if the whole world is against you. Okay, it does not matter if the whole world is against you because you save you, whatever you're doing, you're doing for an audience of one. You're doing it as unto the Lord. The other people just benefit from those things, right? They're, they're beneficiaries, but your motive and your reasoning, you want to please God, vertical, okay? So Pastor Noah Jones over there, he was emotional, everybody else quiet, he starts crying and then Dredd God and said, that's deep. What is deep about that? What is deep about that, that Noah became his own standard? How he decided, you know what, I think I'm just going to marry. Because he, I, he said he had calculated everything to its last whatever. What were you calculating? By what standard? Hmm? By what standard did you come to that conclusion using whatever your calculations you were calculating? So, no, 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 no. We, we don't buy that issue, okay? We don't buy that issue. So, no. Nice try, <laughs> Bishop No, Nice try. <laughs> I have no idea how you all live your lives. That was powerful. And I thank you for that, uh, yeah. Bishop. Thank you for being vulnerable. Um, uh, yeah. I received that and I just, I, right now, I, this is a good time to bring out the wives. Okay, so I have to stop it there and then we'll see when they had um, the wives, I guess this, when they had the wives that way we don't have to play the music okay so let's take a look with the wife session oh. she was good michelle where is she michelle, but you know dominique is uh she's mrs her mother mm -hmm. and this represents her mother we found she, she had a heart attack okay. and and dominique found her her and the kids found her oh, okay yeah so and uh, she was having some 
issues with her heart, but we didn't know it was that to that extent. You know, mm -hmm. she sends her love to all the ladies, oh, yes. and uh, and and mm -hmm. I, I represent her. And a big shout out to Dominique. You are missed. You are missed, Dominique. Well, I mean, you're close to uh, McClendon and Dietrich. Like, how was that being in the middle of this uh, ongoing beef? Well, you understand the idiosyncratic differences between them, and uh, and when you adjudicate, you don't take sides. You got to pick a side, Bishop. No, no, we don't. <laughs> you we don't take side. sides. See, one of the things is when he's right, he's right. When Mac is right, he's right. He's never right. He's never right. A man standing over a man and talking down to him is never right. No, no. That's the, I'm a Detroit wrong. guy. He was wrong at that point. He was wrong. There we yeah. go. That's at that for. point, he Did was wrong. Did you tell him he was wrong, Bishop? Oh, yeah, he was wrong My at man. that point. <laughs> but, uh, but when he's wrong, he's wrong. But you've been wrong, too. Not in that matter. Not in that matter, no. Definitely not. But, but I find said, no fault in a She said ongoing beef. But I don't think it's no, ongoing. It's not ongoing? Oh, no. I, I think he has an on ongoing beef with me. No, it's not the McCoys and the... Who are the other people? Had, had had it's nothing like that. No, 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 no. no well, no. the issue started because of an entourage, right? You were... Don't know he stood up and said, son. No, she said no, when it started. The whole discussion was about the honorary and the entourage. It started over the entourage. And, well, I mean, how did it start over the honorary? Where, where the honorary, yeah, yeah. yes. The, I uh, still believe that The entourage should. was predicated, the honorarium was predicated on the entourage. Boom. So because he's got a big entourage, oh. that means big honorarium. And you had a problem with and the entourage of honorarium. He couldn't come without having his entourage and, and without a certain amount of money. Doc, when oh. you didn't have anybody there, God he, called you. you yeah, but he should be here to defend you. He was going for chicken dinners, preaching everywhere. When you're trying to get your name out there, now your name in lights, now you've got to have an entourage. Are different. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, for instance, uh, my wife may need a makeup person with her. Then she needs a security person with her. With all the things she's been through, she needs a security person with her. No, let's get to it. First Lady Loretta, you came in with a large entourage. It's my staff. It's your staff. Staff, entourage. Yeah, they, they work for me. And, and then you've got to have somebody take care of my dogs. So yeah, have dog. Take care of the, the makeup, the, the clothes, clothes, and, and the then going to take care of us. Well, Loretta's a beautiful, classy lady who needs that. Does he need that? But is Mac he a beautiful, class lady Mac or a man? Is, but Mac is a handsome man who needs that. Oh, is he? I'm about to scream right now. <laughs> oh, well, he got a point there. That, that is true. He got his thing, too. Okay. Okay. So, right. so you do know, we have a problem, though? No. <laughs> that's what you need. Do we have a problem with First Lady having an entourage? Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. Well, Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Ooh. Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So one I was... Just, I just carry a nine, though. Okay. So, now, what are they discussing over here? Okay, so, they were talking about the entourage, and Loretta came to this function with her entourage, okay? So, I'll let you guys hear herself, okay? This is the first lady. Then I'll make... Uh, then we'll talk about it on the other side, okay? So here we go. See what ha what's happening when we're here. I had to wait for two hours. We were working. Mm -hmm. We're working on other projects. I just can't sit with idle time. We have to work. So everybody was working? Yes, it was working. We were emailing and calling people back, putting things in place because we're opening the new church. And so we need to be available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you feel about that? I That's think it's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dietrich. Okay. I don't, Dietrich, do you have an entourage? A oh, staff. I'm sorry. Staff? I have a staff. You have staff. They don't travel with me, but I, you know, I don't need makeup and and all that stuff. You know, I don't. And then we have the puppies, and then you know, have yeah. to have a sitter with them. No, but I'll be honest. Let's let's uh, let's just be honest. People looking at this feel a certain way. When well, they, they say, can feel well, first lady got somebody. Can, she got to watch the dogs. Feel... She got to. What do you say? I'm, I'm you go. I'm just talking for the people. Okay. You know how they. They feel. are entitled to feel what they feel. You can only do what you can afford to do. And if you can afford to do that, it's your money. People, when they see that you're doing well and you wear what and live well, some people don't like that. Um, you know, you talk about, when you talk about what people don't like and things happening, you mentioned security and we talked about entourage. And, uh, you know, we are, I've been knowing them for a while, I'm friends with uh, Lady Loretta, and uh, you had an incident where you were attacked. Okay, so this is Loretta. She went to this interview and they had to wait for two hours. She came in with her entourage, uh, with her staff, with her dogs. So somebody has to take care of the dogs, dog sitting, things of that nature, okay? There's nothing wrong to have, you know, there's nothing wrong being rich. There's nothing wrong having money. However, you cannot be fronting your riches in people's faces, okay? Just because. Not people who are Christians, okay? Like, there's no, like, showing off. Showing off, bragging, it's, it's, it's not good, okay? 
And then she was just like, no, if you can afford it, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you, just because you can afford it, and then by you, you know, showing off like that, it might be a stumbling block to other people, okay? It's a very gray area. There's nothing wrong with you having your riches, right? But if you're using your riches to prop yourself so people can see you, so you're drawing your attention to yourself, that's the problem, okay? As a woman, right? Like, remember, our desire is not, we don't want the attention. Like, you, why are you drawing attention to yourself? Why are you drawing attention to, to your money, to your entourage, to all these other things? How, does, how is that helpful? How is that helpful? So, uh, to me, I didn't like her attitude. I didn't like her demeanor, okay? If you're going to be out here as a first lady, you're going to be out here as a godly woman, you need to be... Uh, that should be coming out. It doesn't matter where you are. At. You see what I'm saying? But to me, she, it, it's too standoff to me. You know, let's watch some more. I didn't believe it. As much security as the vision got all around it, I could not believe that someone would actually attack you. And how are you doing with that? And can you explain what happened? Or, you know, this is your, your opportunity to give your side. Well, I think it bothers her a great deal to even talk about it. Now I've made sure that I've got one person around her who you better not come close because I had to do something to fix that. And she's still insecure about it. She's nervous when someone comes close to her. But she has every right to be able to stand at a pulpit and talk to people. And then some of these people are literally deranged. And we have to deal with the mental health that is circling in our churches. I've been knowing you, and I guess... If you don't mind, I, I, I see, I feel a sense of quietness in you. And I'm, I'm just wondering since this attack, if you feel like, how, are you, how do you move forward? The problem is when you're in a church environment, you let your guards yeah. down, right. period. So now I got a gangster security man. Uh -oh. I got, and it's my job to protect her. What do you mean by gangster? That's why I don't pray with my gangster. Gangster, gangster. you know what you're talking about. <laughs> the alert. No, you, you understand gangster. Hey, you know gangster. You know gangster. Now you're talking about gangster. You know gangster. You know gangster. You know the gang you get right now. So, right now, they are sharing, apparently Loretta was attacked at church. There was a woman who physically attacked her at church. Uh, I don't know how that transpired. So as a result, she's traumatized. And uh, Bishop Noel has hired, I guess, bodyguards and everything to make sure that Loretta is uh, protected. I mean, it's not good that she was attacked. You know, it doesn't matter whether you like her or not. I think there's no point to attack her, let alone attacking her in church. So now they have to beef up security at church, you know. So I don't know how, I don't know why the person atta attacked Loretta, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> So now, I don't know, Loretta just knows how to play a game. She knows how to play real good, okay? It's not good that she was attacked, but do we believe Loretta is quiet right now because of that? Hmm, I don't know, maybe. The group now. Yeah, she looked like a deer, didn't she? Can I say something? This is my wife. She asked about my wife. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you cool off? Sorry, she wasn't always your wife. Yeah, she is now. Okay. All right, Yes, sir, protect your wife. Is it okay? I got to protect my okay. wife. And speaking of protection, do you feel some sense of, I wouldn't say, maybe some sense of guilt or something? I felt that inadequate. That of course. I felt inadequate. I felt a sense of inadequacy. I say, uh, and and, and in, in Doc's word, I don't waited this long to marry a woman, right. and then you have somebody clobber her. Right. You see what I'm saying? I feel quite inadequate. And then, uh, then you start dealing with the issues of forgiveness mm -hmm. and your ability to forgive somebody who has done this kind of thing. And then you've got to end up being Christ-like in a situation mm -hmm. that, and then you expect mm -hmm. her to reduce how she feels in a situation that is so anti who she is because she would never do that to anyone. Mm -hmm. In this case, this case was a case where it was, this lady was known. Wow, you had never had a woman come after you in your church. I have women come after me, you women come after me all the time. Talk to Dietrich and they you know, know he's married. All the time, but all the time. Dominique, yeah. play that. <laughs> she throw hands and elbows she can lay hands and the and church know it. Hands. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, let, let me make a point. Let me make a point. Of the making of beautiful women, there is no end. We have to end it. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's that mean? That simply means no matter how old you are, no matter what your calling is, if you're in the public, somebody's going to like you. Mm -hmm. 
but you have to end it. You have to say, I'm with her, and I will be with nobody else. That's good. Because no matter where you look, no matter how old you get, beautiful women are coming every day from every age. And the older you get doesn't minimize the attention. Men hit on my wife in front of my face. I slap him and say, that's my wife. No, no, no. Especially when a pastor is single. That's why it's not good to have pastors single for that long. Because you will have women who are going to start coming to your church just hoping that one day they're going to be the first lady. Okay? One day they're going to be the first lady. And if they know that, okay, once upon a time you had somebody else you divorced, they can still come be like, okay, if you divorced the first one before... Who's to say you're not going to do the same thing to this one? So I'm just going to be out here hoping, waiting for my teen. Okay, so this, you know, crazy woman who do such things. And uh, just like, okay, you know, I mean, what do you expect, right? You guys want to, you handle yourself as celebrities and everything. So, hey, people are attracted to celebrities. So uh, <laughs> it makes sense. So uh, let's watch some more. He'll recover. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put you in time, man. You've been violent. I'm going to tell you why. You mess with this. Now he's you stepping on Mr. Bible. Gilmore's property. He's quoting the Bible to be okay. violent. Now. Did you go through a metal detector before you came in here? Are you strapped right now? Did you go through the metal detector? Oh, you just asked me, Bishop? No, I, no I don't. I don't I'm going to tell you the truth. It's not a game, but we live in America. Okay? And we have an amendment. Quote the Bible to the assailant. Okay? Okay? I'll quote the Bible. Quote the Bible to the assailant. I'll quote the Bible to the assailant. Yeah. In Luke 22, 38. Uh -huh. Okay. What, what chapter? 22, 22, 38. Verse 38. Yeah. When Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So why not? I, I just carry a nine, though. If you didn't know, if these people didn't introduce themselves as preachers, there's no way you would think that they're preachers. You're just saying these are just uh, regular guys out in L.A. doing whatever else they do. None of the thing, how they handled anything, would make you have any hint that they are preachers. None. None whatsoever. You have Dietrich Harden, everything, whatever they have. It's all worldly standards by how they make certain, uh, uh, certain conclusions. Okay, so... Yes, these are the preachers who are out there preaching day in, day out uh, in their churches. So be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you got to stay away from these guys. OK, so I like it. those who aspire to the office of an overseer, they desire a good thing. OK, but that office, you know comes with certain requirements that you have to keep and that you have to maintain as long as you hold that office. So you know your affairs, okay? So if you know this is not what you're capable of doing, then don't, don't go for it, okay? Don't go for it. So this is uh, uh, Paul right here, writing to Titus, okay? So these are good scriptures for you guys to know, okay? Read Titus 1, Titus 2, Festival 3, gives you an idea, be like, okay, you know, it, it, uh, are people just making their opinion. Is this in the scripture? Especially right now, right? Like how we have these stories. You have Robert Morris. You have Tony Evans. You have these preachers of LA. How should we handle this conversation? How should we see these people, right? Because they seem, they are sincere, right? But they are sincere wrong. You know, and there's these people that you like, right? Tony Evans, 48 years in ministry. So, Maravi Raghraza was what, 50 or 55. So, it's a lot, which I completely get. But Titus, okay? Titus 1, 5 says, This is why I left you in Crete, okay? So that... Hold on. All right, here we go. Okay, this is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, okay? So what is this above reproach? This simply means you should be somebody who is in good standing, okay? Like people cannot just make stories up for you, okay? If you, if let's say you go to Japan and the church is hiring uh, Bishop Noel Jones, you'll be like, who, which Bishop Joel Jones, okay? You already know something. Which Dietrich Harden? Which Dietrich Harden? Because you know what Dietrich Harden is, right? So that elder shouldn't be having something like, oh, don't even bother, right? So he has to be above reproach, okay? The husband of one wife, okay? So if, as long as your wife is still alive, <laughs> you're marrying another one. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have two wives because your divorce wasn't biblical. 
And his children are believers, okay? So there's a thing over here, like, okay, they're talking about, like, believers are born again, but they should be uh, children who are... Um, who respect their parents, right? They are not wilding. They are not an embarrassment to you. Otherwise, you dis, you, you, they will just disqualify you. Are not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination, okay? For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant, okay? Dietrich Haddon is definitely arrogant. Or quick-tempered or a drunkard or a violent or greedy for gain. Right? Greedy for gain. Did you hear the uh, Maisha's ex-husband? Oh, you know, we have to be anywhere else. Financial, financial, everything. Just financial, financial, financial. Mm, okay. Not that he is, but I'm just saying like, okay, those are the antennas should be going up. Okay? Not greedy for gain, but hospitable. A lover of good, self-controlled. Okay? So Morris is not a self-controlled man. He had his wife. He's out there doing certain things inappropriately. Upright. He's not Upright. Holy and disciplined. He's definitely not disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. That is a qualification of what an elder should be. Okay? So these guys, they cannot... They, I mean, Dietrich Harden. There's no sound doctrine with him. So he's... I mean, he's disqualified with so many things. Okay? In so many levels. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but this is what we have. But we are able to know these things because we, we, we're going to stay in our way, right? If you don't know your Bible, then you're going to be here and be tossed to and from by, by all various doctrines, right? But because, you know, stay in your world, stick to it. If you don't understand, ask your past, okay? There's good books out there that can help you. There's good preachers out here that can help you, okay? So, you have any questions, be able to ask your elder, be able to ask your past. So, you'll be able to, to know, right? Like, if you know something and it's true, the whole world can be against it, but you're going to stand firm, right? All scripture is breathed out by God, right? Profitable wife for teaching, for training, for teaching, and for correction, right? That the man of God may be what? Fully equipped for every good work. So just hold on to the scripture, right? The scripture is, is sufficient. The scripture is all that you need. That's your standard, right? Everything that pertains to life and godliness is in the word of God. So there's nothing new under the sun. So we know even Tony Evans was like, oh, it's something people don't know. We might not know about it, but there's nothing new under the sun. God knows it. The word of God knows it. So how they decide to deal with that situation, 20 years from now, it, some other people will be ripping, right? Because when Morris was doing whatever I was doing, I wasn't born. You see what I'm saying? But here I am. Looking back to what he did, we're just measuring up with the scriptures that they did not handle it according to, to the scriptures, right? So, 20 years from now, who knows the situation with Tony Evans? You see what I'm saying? But if you, if you do things in the way that honors God, 20 years from now, be like, no, they handled this situation biblically, okay? And the word of God is going to be revered. But when you compromise, you bring a reproach on, uh, on the word of God. And it should not be so. It shouldn't be so. These guys, yes, they're in error, but they're still alive and well today. They're breathing. They have an opportunity to repent, right? The mercies are new every day. They have an opportunity to reverse course. They have an opportunity to proclaim the good news, right? They have an opportunity to change. They are not beyond redemption. Our God is able, right, to save anybody even to the uttermost. So there's no limits on God, but we shouldn't be doing things to tempt God, right? We, whatever we do, we have to do it as unto the Lord, right? With a good and clear conscience. 